kids. So this is a story about us, faith in the edge of a public difference. Welcome. My name is Adam and yeah, let's begin. What a weekend here in the UK, a special weekend celebrating the key, Queen. Did you guys hear about that? Did you celebrate the Queen? She's 70 years of being the Queen. It's called a Platinum Jubilee. Pretty incredible. Hope you've enjoyed some days off school. Um, I've never met the Queen, but uh, she's been Queen for 70 years. Can you believe that? Yeah, let's discuss this. Ask among one another. If you were to meet the Queen, what is the one question you'd ask her? I wonder what I would ask her. Maybe, did she have fun? I don't know. Because she's the Queen, she can't just do whatever she wants. She's, she's expected to live in certain ways. The same is true for us as followers of Jesus. We can't just always do what we want to do and so today we're going to think about this or that. You know, we have to do what Jesus wants us to do. To help us, we are going to do an activity. All right, so this is what you guys need to do. Take a blank piece of paper, right? And I want you, each person, to write your name on that piece of paper. Then put it out in a little ball and tight ball then uh, there should be an empty bin somewhere or a rubbish bin by a corner if there isn't put one there then everyone let's move to the opposite corner of that uh, all right now what i want you to do is close your eyes and i want you guys to each person after one another take turns and try to throw your screwed up bit of paper into that bin then after everyone has done that let's see who got the closest who knows maybe some of you even put it in the bin the one who has got the closest or put it in the bin is the winner now i want you to repeat this exercise but this time with your eyes open as you would have seen it is easier to get in the bin when you have your eyes open isn't it it's easier to do the right thing when you concentrate on doing the right thing rather than what everyone else around us is doing. Now, I'd ask, like us to, to discuss a few things. There are two passages in the Bible. One is in the book of Proverbs and the one is in the New Testament. First, let's, this, let's read this from the book of Proverbs together. It says, Whenever you are able to do good to people who need help, do it. Can you think of a time when someone has done something good for you? Can you think of a time when you were able to do good for someone else? Maybe. This proverb from the Bible tells us that it is really good good to try and help other people. We are able to live our lives by being kind and helpful to other people rather than just thinking about ourselves, right? All right, now we want to do another activity. This time, your, the person with you is going to give you two sweets each uh, and you have a choice. You can ever, you can either Keep both of the sweets to yourself or you can give one away. It's up to you. I'll give you 10 seconds to choose. Are you ready? Go! All right, how was it? It can be easy to just do what we want all the time, but Jesus didn't. We're going to read from 1 Corinthians 10, 23 to 23 to 33. We'll divide this into three parts. Are you ready? All right, here we go. No one should try to do what will help him only himself, but he should try to do what is good for others. 
Never do anything that might make others do wrong. Jews, Greeks, or God's church. I do the same thing. I try to please everybody in every way. I'm not trying to do what is good for me. I try to do what is good for most people. I do this so that they can be saved. Can you think of a time when Jesus did something for other people? Can you give me examples of when we might be tempted to just please ourselves rather than think about other people? I'm sure you can think of many. Notice that Paul, who writes this, says that I'm trying to do what is good for most people. I do this so that they can be saved. Not only does he want to be helpful to other people, but also wants to get them to know Jesus, to be saved. That's what Paul is saying. I had a story. So, a friend of Tim Chilvers, do you, you guys all know Tim Chilvers, don't you? Years ago, his friend wasn't a Christian and Tim decided to invite him to church uh, and try to get him baptized, but his friend didn't become a Christian. Nothing happened. But then a few years later, his friend went to university and met some other friends who were Christians, started hanging out with them. And later on, guess what? He became a Christian. Now, he is even one of the leaders in the church that Tim grew up in. Isn't that incredible? But it was through just other people being Christian around him that he eventually saw that it was good and he himself became a Christian. And that is the same truth for us. You may have friends or family members that are just trying to, to follow Jesus. You might have, by following Jesus, you might impact their lives. Who do you know that you'd like to know Jesus? Think about that. Is there anyone in your life you'd, you'd want them to know Jesus? Okay, let's spend some time praying because this is very helpful. Just as you sit there in a moment of peace, maybe say the names of the people you know, of friends or family members that you'd like to become Christians. Say their names out loudly. Then afterwards, I'll pray a prayer or maybe you can even pray this prayer for them. Here it goes. Dear Lord, thank you for all these people we mentioned. Thank you that you love them. Help me to think of how I can help them. Help me to realize you care about every area of my life. And please help me to point them to your love and to your grace. In Jesus' name, Amen. So this week, let's see how much we can help others this week, right? It's been great to be together. It's, I loved speaking to you guys and I hope one day I can do this again. See you next week. Bye.